Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1 video game review the boy who lived might wish he hadn't. When I heard that Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1 was abandoning the carefree adventure style of the previous games, I thought it was an appropriate move. The last book is the darkest and most intense one of the series and intended for a more adult audience, so it's understandable that EA Bright Light would want to create something more action-oriented to reflect that. Though I get what the studio was going for. I have to say they failed to create anything worthy of the Harry Potter branding. To catch you up to speed, the Deathly Hallows follows Harry's decision to abandon his schooling after Dumbledore's death and Lord Voldemort's second rise to power. The Chosen One and his friends Ron and Hermione embark on a more dangerous quest than studying for their hen.e.w.t.s, looking for Voldemort's remaining Horcruxes. The Horcrux is an object used to store a piece of someone's soul to attain immortality and Voldemort created several of them which need to be destroyed before he can be killed. With Voldemort taking over, neither the Wizarding nor Muggle world is safe, so the trio is constantly running from Death Eaters and Snatchers, both of which serve the Dark Lord. The game mainly shifts between first-person stealth sequences with Harry's cloak of invisibility and third-person shooting, but neither of them is particularly fun. Harry levels up and learns numerous spells like Confringo causes massive explosions and Petrificus totally lose the body-binding spell but it's fairly easy to stick with the weak but quick stupefy. The Deathly Hallows quickly devolves into nothing but a generic, almost broken shooter. It's disappointing to say the least. When there is cover, which there's often not, it usually gets in the way of Harry's casting, causing the poor rock or crate to be struck with numerous stupefies. It doesn't help that you'll be fighting the camera when you duck behind cover, as it zooms in way too close to be of any real use. Though taking cover sometimes works, it's usually easier to stick with Protego, the protection spell. Harry's armory isn't restricted to spells, he can also throw potions like the erosing gas to make foes gag though if he's behind cover he'll usually toss it at his feet instead of at his enemies. Death Eaters and Snatchers drop these potions randomly, and while you can pick up offensive ones to use in battle, all health or boost potions like Strengthening or Felix Felicize the Good Luck potion must be consumed immediately. This isn't usually a big problem. But it can get really annoying when you're surrounded by Death Eaters and all you can do is pray that one of them will drop health potion. Attacking everyone that operates, though instinctive, isn't the best strategy, as enemies will spawn AD nauseum. This is incredibly frustrating because it forces you to flee instead of fight, as the bad guys keep coming no matter what. Toward the end of the game you will literally just travel from one end of a level, watch a cutscene, then head back to where you started, fighting some combination of Snatchers, Acromantula. Doxies, Dementors, and Death Eaters as you flee. To guide you on your journey you'll cast a spell that emits a glowing trail, which you cast by tapping the or circle. Unfortunately, it doesn't always work, the trail disappears or nothing happens when you go to initiate the spell. Yes, most of the levels are linear, but there are a few places that look so similar you can get turned around, especially when being tailed by multiple hostiles. Sprinkled throughout the story are stealth missions. Unfortunately, they aren't any more impressive than the shooting sections, but since they pop up less frequently, they seem less bothersome. The switch to a first-person perspective while being sneaky is difficult. You don't have peripheral vision to help you keep your distance from folks or peek around corners. Your cloak also has to charge, which requires Harry to stand off in a corner for a while. Awesome! What's even worse is that in the Xbox 360 version you'll continue to float even after you've stopped moving. I tested the game with a few different controllers and every time Harry would continue moving until he hit a wall or person. I didn't seem to have that trouble with the PlayStation 3 version, however, so perhaps it is just an issue with the Xbox's controller.